Welcome back to the Gen 20 Podcast. I'm Nicole. And I'm Marina. And today we're talking about perfectionism. What is it, how it affects us, and what to do if you have this type of mindset. To start, I'll say that I don't consider myself a perfectionist. I lean towards a let's get it done and we'll fine tune it later type of mindset. I really lean more into this as I got older because I used to be more self-conscious about things I wanted to do in life. Do you consider yourself a perfectionist, Marina? Um, That's a good question. I like to call myself a recovering perfectionist because growing up, I was definitely a perfectionist and would worry all the time about things being like, like whether it was relationships or assignments or my own actions. Growing up, I thought everything had to be perfect or somehow the world would crash and burn. And so now I've tried to focus more on done is better than perfect and, you know, be more, be present and kind of figure things out as you go instead of worrying about it all, all at once. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's really easy to get kind of caught up into this. Like it's kind of in the way we perceive ourselves even and how we want other people to perceive us as perfect And I think that can really extend itself into a lot of things we try to do in life because we want them to be perfect, you know? Okay, so to define perfectionism, we looked at psychology today and they explained signs of it as being having unrealistic and high expectations, procrastination because you're afraid of failing, inability to accept compliments or to critique oneself, and looking for external validation. I think I would personally add to that that you have a lot of ideas, but you feel like you're struggling to get anything off the ground, but you also have really big expectations for yourself that you constantly talk yourself out of reaching. What do you think? I Yeah, I agree. And like I mentioned earlier, I think there's an aspect of control in play too, because for some people, like for me, as long as you're working to perfect something, there's you're not failing because there's still the possibility of success rather than like once you finish it there's that fear of it failing and not being received the way you intend. But in reality, you can do everything quote unquote perfectly and people will still receive it how they're going to receive it. We have no control over that. So I think perfectionism is just our brains trying to say, oh, I can, I can fix it. I can control it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense, especially because I think, People who do consider themselves perfectionists tend to be more anxious and procrastinating. And I feel like having control over something is a way that I, in the past, have coped with my anxiety. Mm -hmm. So while I don't really consider myself a perfectionist, I can definitely see how having control over something would lead you to be practicing perfectionism. Yeah. Yeah. And... And I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm kind of a recovering perfectionist, right? Like I'm trying to just roll with the punches and accept things that might not look nice or I'm working on a novel and it's just the first draft. And I literally had to write a post-it that says, it's okay. It's just a draft because I would get myself stuck on like, oh, I'll just re-edit this chapter before I move forward. And it's like, nope, just like keep going with the flow. So yeah, with perfectionism, it just it's just an element of control. Mm-hmm. So I think a lot of times, um, I guess just speaking for myself personally, like I feel like I've always been able to move forward with things that I wanted to do because I never really measured them with like a barometer of success. For example, like for me, I always felt like if I did something and it wasn't good enough or I need to change it later, I could always go back and do that. And that's, I guess, how I felt like I had control over things that I was doing in my life. Like, I never thought they had to be perfect. I just thought they needed to be, like, good enough, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I was the exact opposite. I thought, like, once it's once you've submitted it or sent, out, sent it out into the world, it has to be perfect. Like, you can't go back. And I remember one time I was in a, my Spanish class in high school and I for, I guess I just didn't hear the homework assignment. So I didn't do my homework. I was supposed to make flashcards. And I remember the girl in front of me, I had known her since middle school, but didn't really know her. And she turned around and was like, you didn't do the assignment, but I thought you were perfect. And I remember thinking, no, I'm far from perfect. Like I try so hard and I'm never perfect. And it's just an interesting 
way to kind of rationalize things because for me in high school, my end goal was to be perfect because I thought that meant I would be happy and safe and successful or whatever. And Mm -hmm. in reality, all my peers, I guess, I can't say all my peers, but there were peers of mine who noticed that endeavoring and it did not help me succeed in making friends. (laughs) So, (laughs) so it's kind of just like alienated me. Yeah, that's really interesting how it's like we're chasing our idea of perfect, but the idea of perfect for other people can be completely different. And like, that's how they perceive the work that you're doing. It's a really interesting perspective. I think like for being a perfectionist, it's sort of like a way that we can box ourselves in by achieving, like trying to find this idea of perfect because it doesn't allow us to do or achieve anything else. And I think where we kind of said that perfectionists have, like, this fear of failing, I also think it's attached to this idea of the fear of success. Because once you have succeeded at something, that's, like, a new journey to something else because you have to move to, like, the next level if you think about it like that. Wow. Yeah, that's that's interesting. The f- idea of being afraid to succeed you know, I get that. That's I've definitely had that fear. And and because of that mentality, we're holding ourselves back. Mm-hmm. We're, we're just frozen in this like space we've created for ourselves, unable to move forward or backward. Yeah, and I think like perfectionism, like I don't know, maybe I am more of a perfectionist than I thought because maybe I do limit myself in ways that I didn't think that I did. Hmm. Okay, because for example, I, this probably won't make sense to a lot of people, but there was something I was working on recently, and there was a method that I knew that it's how I would succeed doing this, but I was so, so resistant to doing that particular way, and I've spent months, months trying something else to make it work, and then I finally recently just embraced what I knew I should have been doing all along, and what do you know? It has exceeded beyond my wildest dreams and it's just a very strange feeling and like maybe that's a way like a form of perfectionism coming out because I think a lot of ways like when I think about perfectionism in some ways it's like you were saying Marina like I'm, I'm imagining you sitting at your computer typing and typing the same paragraph over and over and over again because you're like this isn't what I want to say and you're just going back and deleting it while like in your mind you still want to move forward Mm -hmm. But you're, like, stopping yourself because you're really hung up on something. And I guess that's kind of what it was for me, too. Yeah. Mm. And that's funny. Um, I know a lot of times I just want to get it right. And I think that idea is, like, also being perfect is, like, being right. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm working on a paragraph, ideally, I would just throw out the thought, move forward, and then like polish it in round two or three of of revisions. But I get frozen in, oh, well, it's just not quite right yet. And I can't move forward until it's exactly what I want it to be. And that's not going to be, not going to help me be successful because I will never move past page two. Yeah, that's interesting that you say that because looking at the definition of perfectionism from Psychology Today, it talks about um, looking to specific people for approval and validation, but what about looking to yourself for approval and validation, and what if we're trying so hard to reach standards that we've set for ourselves that we never give ourselves our own approval? It's true, and I think if you are able to give yourself approval, you won't care what anybody else thinks because you'll know it's the level you want it to be. But Mm -hmm. I think being able to give yourself approval also first means that you're setting reasonable like goals. Because if you're like, if I, so if I tell myself I want to write a hundred pages a day, I can never approve because I can like physically not do that. Yeah. It's not possible. (laughs) It's not possible. But if I say, oh, I want to write a thousand words a day, that I can do and that I can and if I finish instead of saying hey Nicole like I wrote a thousand words today give me Mm -hmm. a praise I can just say I did it go me Mm -hmm. like let's do it again tomorrow yeah but even diving a little bit deeper into that example and saying that you didn't reach that goal 
And instead of beating yourself up for days for not reaching that goal, you can let it go and try again tomorrow. And I think that that's a way to kind of move past perfectionism as well. Yeah. Because, because... yeah, even if your goals are reasonable, that doesn't mean you're always going to meet them. Especially, that's so true. That's so true. Especially now when we're working in a pandemic and with all the social change and it's, things are different and we have to kind of roll with each day and Mm -hmm. be okay with it. That's the only way I think we can learn and grow is if we just let ourselves adapt and take ourselves away from, I think because people, or at least for me, I'll use me as an example because I don't want to speak for the entire population, population, but because I have trouble staying in the present, I'm always worried about like what has happened in the past and how I could have changed it or what might happen in the future and how I can prevent it or change it or like anticipate it. And that's kind of perfectionism in a really broad spectrum because if I'm just thinking about what I can do today, what I can do right now, things I can adapt. But if I'm constantly thinking like, okay, I'm going to have a Skype call and this is what we're going to talk about and we're going to do this and it's going to last exactly this amount of time. If I pre-plan that and then get on a Skype call with someone who I did not share my plan with, it's not going to go to plan. And then this whole time I'm going to be panicking being like, okay, we're going 20 minutes long and we didn't even talk about this book yet or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so disclaimer, I don't do that, but like old me would have. So so. (laughs) the me of the past, the me of the past. Yeah. I think perfectionism is really, it's really a limiting belief ultimately. And it's like a limiting belief that leads to limiting behaviors And I think it's a lot of time, like, how we've said, like, it leads to you procrastinating, which leads you to not meeting your expectation, let alone exceeding your expectation to, like, what you would feel like is perfect. So really, like, it, I think in a lot of ways it can feel like it's motivating you to be like, oh, well, I'm taking my time with this because I'm a perfectionist. But really, how is that helping you in the long term? It's not. That's the secret, guys. It's not. I I don't know how many times I, – okay, I will – not to be dramatic. I will say like at least three times in my career I've been given advice from higher-ups like managers or mentors who tell me sometimes it's not about perfect. It's about done. And I, rem- I remember one of my managers was telling me this. And I was like, well, I I can't send this email. It was like my first job out of college. I was like, I can't send this email until it's perfect. And he said, well, barring that there are no, you know, spelling errors or egregious grammar errors or typos, you can just send it. And if they have follow-up questions, they have follow-up questions. You can't Mm -hmm. anticipate everything they're going to say. You just have to like, you have to send it and move on or you'll never get anything done. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's, like, really interesting because perfectionism can take a lot of forms. It doesn't always necessarily just look like this has to be perfect, you know, because it's just a way that we restrict ourselves from sending an email. I know I have emails in my inbox that I just haven't responded to pretty much for that exact reason. And it's it's hard because, I mean, with emails specifically in communication, like, there's no perfect way to say something or to send something, you know. Yeah. Like, and sent is better than not sent. Right. I have definitely waited weeks to a month or more because I'm think, trying to think of like the right, quote unquote, right or perfect response. And then I get called out for never responding. And it's like, oh, I should have just like acknowledged I got this email and said, I'm thinking about it and we'll get back to you. But instead, I just yeah. silently stewed. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think another way that I was just thinking about that, um, like, perfectionism can kind of cause us to get in our own ways is that we don't – how do I phrase this? We don't do more because we're afraid of – how. like, we allow ourselves to fail, I guess, by doing less Mm -hmm. because it's sort of, like, an excuse. And it's like, okay, well, I didn't do X, Y, and Z, so that's why I didn't do as well as I expected. 
And I think that takes a lot of forms, like in our regular lives, even. It's true. And I think one thing to realize about perfectionism and and having this like needs to be perfect mindset is that like the word perfect is so biased. Like what's a perfect, like a perfect Saturday to me might look completely different for you. And so if I, if you're coming to visit and I want to plan the perfect day, you know, I might not hit that mark because we have different ideas of it. And Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the stuff we obsess about or the things we worry about, other people don't even notice. Or if they notice, it's such a, it's such an incremental thing that they don't think it affects the final product. So Mm -hmm. yeah, if you, being perfectionist is just setting yourself up for failure. Yeah. Pretty much no matter how you look at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we've talked a lot about like what it is, different examples, how I'm neurotic, things like that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Nicole, like how can we, how can I, and how can we all continue to pivot away from this perfectionist ideal? Um, I think one of the first things we can do, like we've talked about multiple times is to accept that done is better than perfect more like 99.999% of the time. Um, And It's true because there really is no definition of perfect, and it's like with emails, sent is better than not sent. Responding is better than not responding, even if you have to respond negatively. You know, um, it's better for communication all around. It's better for setting expectations between two people, and even, you know, setting an expectation is way better than letting someone else assume something is going to be the way it's not, and I think another important thing we haven't right touched on yet is that when... You know, like, you know that you are capable of amazing and wonderful and fabulous things. Like, every single one of you listening to this. And I think one way that I've especially personally learned this year to to help you achieve those things is that you need to be collaborating with other people. Mm -hmm. And I think that doing so will help us not only define what our idea of perfect, quote unquote, and good enough is but it will also help us get there. I completely agree. Like I, again, am working on a novel and a a fully written novel is better than a perfect partially written novel. And I was getting really stuck maybe three weeks ago. I hit a, hit a page count mark and I was really excited. And then I took a break and the next day went back to it and just was frozen because then I, I felt this expectation to to produce and have it be really good and hit more marks. And finally, I just sent my pages to a friend of mine from grad school. We're writing buddies. And she read it over and gave me a little feedback. And I realized, oh, 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 yeah, I just need to get out of my head and and just be in it. And I was able to like pick back up from where I lost because I just especially for creators, you can't create in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. We don't, we don't exist as an Island. We, we all need each other. And that is, helps you bring perspective to the day to day. And when you collaborate with someone, you stop comparing yourself because Mm -hmm. comparison is not going to serve you. Yeah. I think that's also another fantastic topic for perhaps future episode, because I've learned a lot about comparison Uh, myself that I would love to share and I think this also touches on the idea that things don't have to be perfect to be worthwhile or to be valuable and everything is a work in progress and I Mm -hmm. think that that's the way to look at it um like something is a work in progress and you know like with a novel eventually it'll be done and it'll be published and you know it'll be done fingers crossed (laughs) yeah no it's gonna happen (laughs) <laughs> it's and yeah and I think one thing that has helped me in kind of changing my mindset is to be more mindful to realize how I'm talking to myself when I'm stuck on a hard part of my novel or things don't go the way I want to rather than saying you know rather than comparing myself to someone else or feeling like critiquing myself I try to see around it and say, well, I did accomplish something and I, I am doing well and I can achieve this. Like it's the way you talk to yourself matters. 
and Mm -hmm. the way we like just not to look through the world with rose colored glasses, but just looking for an increment of sunshine versus an increment of rain in a situation helps and can change your Mm -hmm. whole outcome. Yeah, like your self-talk, the way you're talking to yourself in your mind, and even the way you speak about yourself are so important um, because, I mean, at the end of the day, you are the person you hear speak the most, and you are the Mm -hmm. person who talks to you the most, and what you say to you is something you're internalizing on almost like a per second basis, (laughs) like you are always internalizing those thoughts and fears, and I mean, I don't know about you, maybe some people would, but... I would never talk so poorly to a friend of, like, how harsh I can be towards my own work. If someone spoke to my friends the way I spoke to me, I would punch them. (laughs) So why do I let myself get away with these, like, very harsh thoughts? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, But it's it's practice. Yeah, you need to, like, intervene when you start hearing yourself say, oh, this isn't good enough. This will never be good enough. Like, I don't know why I can't produce X, Y, and Z. Before anyone says, well, I'm not good at self-talk, like, I'm I have to, I'm not – like, before you try to make yourself perfect at being kind to yourself, remember that it's a progress. So, you know, for me, I'm not perfect, right? We established this. That's a good thing. I'm not always going to be the best at praising myself, but I can catch myself in the in the act of thinking negatively and say, you know, if I if I say, "Oh, I'll never write a I'll, my novel will never be as good as." It's like, "Well, hang on. It might never it might never be good as, but it's pretty good." Yeah, I think um also bringing this up is something that needs to be said is that your self-worth and how valuable you are as a person is not what you've accomplished. It's not what you've done. It's not awards. You know, it's not – people don't even have to say nice things about you for you to be valuable yeah. because everything you bring to the table is valuable, and we're all a work in progress, and perfect is not a thing that exists and has never existed, and it will never exist. Never so I think as long – yeah, as you're doing your best and you – are looking internally for growth and you are wanting to achieve things and if you're working towards those I think that that's good enough amen all right guys this has been another episode of the gen 20 podcast we hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll leave a review or rate if you feel like it and we'll see you next time 